Okay, so how do URLs actually work? So I have two URLs here, one from Facebook, so I can explain. So as we all know, up to the point where it says facebook.com, this part is the server address. So we all know this. The other parts where there's a slash, this is usually a folder name or a file name. The file name is usually at the end. But this part is more interesting after the question mark. This part, the whole lot of this is called a query string. So this is the part immediately after the question mark. Everything else is a query string. So what this actually is, is a group of variables with their values. So if you look, there's an equal sign here. So this is a variable on the left of the equal sign, and that is its value on the right side of the variable, of the equal sign, sorry. And then you have an and sign, which means this next one is another variable with its value. The and sign, another variable, and its value. So this is the format of URLs. So let's look at an easier URL right here. So as you have seen, this is the server name. This is the folder. This, however, is the file, the home.php. That's the file we are dealing with. And then this, after the question mark, this is variable one is equal to one and variable two is equal to two and variable three is equal to three. So let's see how all this ties uh, or works in action. So let me uh, add the PHP tag over there and save this as page one.php. Okay. Let me save that. All right. Let me add the closing PHP tag. Okay. So let's uh, create a link to page two, for example. So the link here, let me echo out a link. So the href, and then we say click here and then the closing a tag like that. So as usual, this is a link. Let me run this in Firefox. Okay, there we are. So let me make sure that this is localhost here. Make sure Apache is running as well over there. All right, so if I click here, this sends me to, oh, let me give it a link where to go. This is supposed to go to page two dot PHP, okay? So let's create that page two. Let's say new file. And we say this is page two. Let me save that as page two dot PHP. Save. So this is page two. We have to have something to signal that this is page one. So let me type it there. All right, so let me refresh this and we see this is page one. So if I click here, I go to this is page two. So let's put a link here also that sends us back uh, to page one. Let me just do this, page two. This one goes to page one. So we have a simple website here going on. We click here, we go to page one. We click there, we go to page two. So now we, I want us to transfer information from page one as we click to page two. So let me go back to page one. Now in page two, we know that uh, if we add information on the get variable, on the query string, sorry, we can access that query string using a get variable that's created by PHP. So let me add this query string that we're using as an example. So let me get this part, the query string, and add it to this link over here. So when I click, uh, let me refresh this and click, you see that we get exactly the same thing, no difference, page two dot PHP, uh, even though I remove the query string, I still get page two. If I put it back, I still get page two because all this is at the end are variables to determine what kind of information to show on this particular page. So let's access these uh, variables that came with the link. So to do that, we use the get variable, which is a global uh, variable, which you do, you write uh, dollar sign underscore and get. So let's print and see what's inside there. Let's print a readable. This is on page one, so let's click and go to page one. So we see that it's an array, an empty array. So to make it look nicer, let's add some uh, pre-tags like that on the top and a closing pre-tag at the bottom so that when I refresh, I see it like that. Okay, so let's add this uh, 
thing on page two as well so we can see what we are getting. So if I click to page two, and then you see, voila, ver1 is equal to 1, ver2 is equal to 2, ver3 is equal to 3. So where are these values coming from? From the query string. So if I change something in here, you see the value changes as well. So I can transfer information just like this. I can even manipulate this information with letters and numbers and so on, and I'll get these. I can even manipulate the variable names if I want to. See that? So that's how you move information from one page to the next. So this information is usually used, uh, for example, if, it, if this is a store, uh, let's go back to page one. Let me write something meaningful. Let's say uh, ver1 would just be uh, book name, for example. Let's say Harry uh, Potter, okay? Then we say category, we say fiction, Right, then here we say year uh, 2000 or something. So let me refresh that page. Uh, let me go to page two, go back to page one. So you see now that this information has changed according to what's in the URL. So now it's book name, Harry Potter, category fiction, year 2000. So this information is more meaningful. So what exactly does uh, the browser do with this information? Most of the time, a query string is only there if you are using a dynamic website. So the website uses this information to check for more information about, for example, this book in the database. So it will look for the title, it will look for the category which matches all this information and then display maybe the image of the book and more information about the author or something. So this could be posts like Facebook posts or something like that. So the query string determines what kind of information will be displayed on the page. You can manipulate this information directly into the browser and then it will change the query string as well. So if I click here on page two, because there's no, uh, on page one, sorry, because there's no query string, the get variable is also empty. All right. Now the problem comes in, let's say you have Harry Potter and instead, you want it to be Harry and Potter, for example. So in this particular case, let me uh, go back and back. What will happen is that book name becomes Harry and then Potter is uh, recognized as another variable because here it's Harry and Potter. When in actual sense, you wanted to use this and as an actual literal and. So to avoid this thing, there's what we call URL encoding. So we have to encode this data to avoid this kind of problem. So let's concatenate uh, this function called URL encode. And we encode this string inside it like that. So this is a string we've concatenated a URL encoded version of Harry and Potter and connected again to the rest of the string. So this will be encoded to make sure that it gets there as a literal and and not as part of this type of and. So let's do that and see what happens. Let me click and you see Harry and Potter comes back as it is. Now, if you notice in the browser, the and is converted to percent 26. So this is the hex uh, uh, equivalent of this, all right? So this is encoded to this value in order for the browser not to, mis, uh, take, not to mistake it for this and here. So it looks very different now to that one. Then it's converted back when it's being displayed. It's decoded again. So if I try another symbol like the slash, you will see a similar effect happen. So this one is uh, converted to percent %2f and then it's uh, brought back here. So there are two types of these functions. There's URL encode and then there's raw URL encode. The major difference is that, uh, let me try to use this raw URL encode and you'll see that there's really no difference. The only difference is with spaces. When you are using URL encode, the spaces are converted to plus signs. So Harry Potter, if you see there, there's a plus sign in there, Harry plus Potter but the plus sign is removed, decoded, during the display of this information. So now at least you understand what the 
information after the question mark of any URL actually means. So these are variables with their values. That's what it is. So we'll be using these to load information from the database, depending on what the user clicks. This is how the website knows what information to pick for this particular page.